What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. So it is time to address the elephant in the room. If you've got a good eye, you may have noticed in the last video that I uploaded, my wagon was out on jack stands on my back patio. And the reason for that is I have decided to sell that chassis. It was a hard decision. It's not necessarily what I prefer to do. I was fully planning on keeping that car as my daily. So that was the intention and the plans with that. And I was gonna kind of develop the car a little bit over time, but mostly make it a comfortable, quick, fun, daily driver. And the fact that it was a wagon made it that much more versatile, etc. But I found someone interested in just the chassis, so I am pulling parts off it and we are repurposing certain things for this build and then other parts I'm going to either sell off or maybe stash, I'm not really sure yet. Um, sometimes the OEM parts stashes can get a little out of control and it starts to border on just hoarding. So stuff that might be hard to find that I might wanna spare of, I may keep. I think the majority of it is stuff that will need to be used on this car. And a big reason for coming to that decision was because what I've decided to do with this car and the direction that I want to take it, and that is, I would really like to build this thing for grid life street class. It's gonna require more uh, than just getting the car up and running. And, and the reason I say that is because in order to be competitive in street class, I'm gonna have to do certain things to the car that are gonna be a little bit more expensive in order to, yeah give it a competitive edge. What's cool about street class, or like what I think is cool about it, is that you can use any part from the same manufacturer as the car that you're driving. So if I wanted to put an EJ257 in this bug eye, which never came with an EJ257, I could do that because it's a Subaru engine. Same with like the six speed transmission. Even if the car didn't come with one, you could still swap one in because it's a Subaru component. There's, there's other details, but we can get into that. Um, later on. There is the Laguna Seca race in September and I would really like to have the car finished and be able to race in that event but that means that there's a lot of stuff that has to happen between now and then that doesn't even pertain to the car itself. Like I need to go out and start doing some track days in order to have enough experience for them to allow me to actually race in street class. Like you can't just show up and have never driven on track and just get to race, it doesn't work like that. So uh, yeah, I need to like do at least like probably three to five track days and, ha and have an instructor with me in the car for at least a couple of those track days. Uh, yeah, so there's a little bit of a process that has to happen in order for me to get to that point. But it is a goal of mine, I really would like to make that happen. And if it's not the Laguna Seca race, I will be trying to do a different race later on in that season. And I think it's really cool that they're finally doing stuff on the west coast before i didn't really see grid life as uh, a potential organization that i could do any racing through because everything was in the midwest or east coast just really far to travel for that you know racing is already so expensive that having to tow a car that far is just like i don't know I'm, I'm just not there yet maybe one day i will be and i'll be able to do like the whole circuit but i do want to at least do like one or two races um, start getting some seat time and some experience on track because it's been a big goal of mine for a long time but as I'm sure most of you know, it's hard to make happen because it's just so damn expensive. And yeah, I think that that is just really the biggest barrier to entry with, with amateur racing is just the price. But, but yeah, just wanted to share that with you guys, share my goals, share my plans that I've been thinking on for a while with this car and also wanted to update you on the wagon. I know some of you are probably gonna be disappointed to hear that about the wagon because it's the car that brought you to this channel in the first place, but it is what it is, man. I'm not rich and I wish I was for stuff like this because it would make my life a lot more simple. But, you know, I still feel very fortunate and very lucky to get to do the stuff that I do. So I'm not complaining at all. I don't want you guys to think that. Um, I recognize that I am in a very fortunate position to have what I got, even if it may not be the best. So with that said, today I'm gonna be pulling some parts off of the wagon, which is sitting right here on the jack stands, like I said. I've already kind of started assembling pieces off of it. I have actually sold some of the uh, body panels and I even sold the EJ205 the other week that we had in here, just the long block. You might've saw that in the uh, previous video as well and was wondering where that came from but it's a little uh bittersweet i guess i had a lot of fun building this car uh i honestly thought i would keep it forever but 
yeah, man, plans change, you know, and in order to be able to keep kind of moving forward and doing more cool builds and potentially getting to uh, actually be able to race, uh, you know, I gotta do what I gotta do. And yeah, I don't wanna hide anything. I just wanna be totally transparent with you guys. And I'm not trying to like flex and portray some like baller lifestyle that's not even realistic and isn't <laughs> isn't actually the life that I'm living. We're gonna start tearing it down some more and uh, yeah, get it down to like almost a bare chassis. The person I'm selling it to just wants to swap all of their pieces onto this car. They just wanted it basically because I did these quarters to be honest. Uh, but yeah, we'll get the rear diff out of there. I wanna get that put up in the car and I kinda just wanna start taking off more of the suspension components on this car. Some stuff I may uh, re-sandblast and refinish if it just didn't get done the last time I built that car or if like I just didn't do as good of a job as I could. All right, so I got the rear diff out of the wagon and I lied, we're not going to be mounting that back up in the rear of the car because I had almost forgot that I wanted to press out the bushings from the rear diff carrier and replace them with some super pro polyurethane bushings. And I did, I did end up investing in a shop press like I had talked about in the last video. So it is sitting right here. And the reason I decided to go this route is because I do have some bushings that I wanna press and my rear wheel bearings I would like to replace. And the last time I took parts to a local uh, driveline shop and had them press some bushings for me, it cost me over a couple hundred dollars. They were so old and crusty that they were really stubborn. So it took the guys like over two hours. It was like two and a half hours of labor to get the bushings out. And I realized that doing that, I could have just bought one of these shop presses. So I told myself that the next time I needed something like that done, I would just invest in one of these. And the other nice thing about this is I will be able to hopefully open up this six speed gearbox and press the gears off of that input shaft in order to replace the synchros. Now I'm not sure how that's gonna go, but I am willing to give it a shot and dig into this thing and see if I'm able to sort it out myself. It would be really nice to be able to do that. And I think that the uh, shifting would be a lot smoother in this thing. Like I said in the last video, it did kind of seem like the synchros were starting to go bad in this thing when I drove it home. So worst case scenario, I am unable to get the nut off the end of that input shaft. If I'm not able to get that nut off because the nut that holds the gears on the shaft, I, I believe it's torqued down to like over 200 foot pounds. So you really need to have something that can clamp that thing and you need something that can clamp the shaft without damaging it. So I've seen some people make some tools just for that specific use. I don't know if I'll be able to make something or just kind of MacGyver something at the house, but like I said, I am willing to try and if I'm not unable to get that nut off, I'm sure that I can take it somewhere and have them zip that thing off and then we can press the gears off the shaft. So I did try to press the bushings from that rear diff carrier. So this is the rear diff carrier um, and these are the bushings that I'm trying to replace. And as you can probably tell, I have started to torch these bad boys. Apparently a hack for these is you can just set them on fire and melt out the rubber. It is very stinky and it is a little bit time consuming, but it's working. So I'm gonna keep doing that. I'm kind of going back and forth between hitting these with my little blowtorch and then working on pressing the bearings from the other knuckle. So yeah, I guess uh, we're gonna keep going with this and see if we can get it to work. So these are all of the other pieces. So I have the front two like knuckles there. This is the rear knuckle and have everything pressed out of them. All right guys, so first thing I did was I flipped this upside down. I had to like use some wood blocks like this to raise the thing up. And that was just so I can press this whole spindle out. And this is a 29 millimeter socket that I'm using to press. And the other one came out really easily. Boom. This 
piece. We'll set this piece aside for now and we'll come back to that. I'll do this last because we got to use like a little bearing separator tool for that one. All right, now I have it flipped over. I think a 34 millimeter socket fits in here. This is actually like a, I think a ball joint remove, removal tool from 20, company 23. Um, so I'll set that in there. Yeah, I made the mistake of almost attempting to press it out with this whole thing flipped the other way and that will not work. And we can pull this whole entire dust shield off. All right, now this next bit is a little bit tricky and it's gonna be tricky for me to show you guys, but inside here, there's this uh, snap ring and it's really heavy duty. All right guys, and one thing I figured out yesterday, it actually took me a while to come up with this idea, is um, in order to get this inner race out, it's like this recessed piece and something needs to like fit in there nicely. The bearing that you just pressed out, it fits in here perfect. I just tossed it in upside down like this. I grabbed my uh, big boy socket right here. All right, it's not enough length. That's what she said. So let's just do this. Cool. This is what that bearing race looks like. Both sides of the bearings just fit in either side of this like that. So now that this is cooled, and we've melted a lot of that rubber away, we should in theory be able to at least pull this pin out. Oh yeah, that thing's for sure coming out. Okay, and these stink so bad. So let me just, yeah, that one just needs more time. I almost forgot to show you guys how to get the other half of the bearing off of the little spindle here. I think that's what this piece is called. Uh, that half of the bearing. So what I needed to grab, there's always another tool that you have to buy, right? Uh, this little bearing separator from Harbor Freight, it's around 30 bucks, so pretty cheap. It's actually quite robust. Um, Harbor Freight can be hit or miss, as I'm sure most of you know. seal and the bearing came off. Now that's what happened last time. I had to kind of press that piece off first before I could get these underneath that piece properly. So I have started to sandblast the rear knuckles, and they are sandblasting quite easily, even with my crappy compressor, so I'm super happy about that. Uh, I am having to like take breaks, and because of that, I have been going back and forth between sandblasting and removing these bushings out of this rear diff carrier. I've been able to get the entire bushing out, as well as that metal sleeve that sits in the center of this. Here's the other side that I am still currently working on. So this is the metal sleeve. As you can see, I did some work to that thing. There's that inner ridge that you can see. I stick a pry bar in there to where it starts to bend that metal in. Kept working it until it just slid right out. In the past, I have rushed through builds because I really wanted to get to the end result, right? I was so focused on getting the car built so that I could drive it, so I could test it, I could make sure that it worked, I could make sure that I was able to get the job done. The achievement itself isn't going to like make me happy and whenever I rush through, after I'm done, I'm kinda lost and I feel like there's something missing because I don't have this big project to tackle. And so I guess part of refinishing these parts and taking it to such a detailed degree is sort of extending out the process that I really enjoy, which is actually like putting the car together. So yes, I do want to drive this thing. Yes, I do want to be able to tune this thing. Yes, I do want to race this thing. Can't do that unless you build the thing, but I don't know. I also see the value in taking your time and not rushing through things and making it as good as you can possibly be so that you know you didn't cut any corners.
All right, so here are most of the pieces that I have refinished. Uh, so rear diff carrier, this is what we used that SEM paint on. Looks really freaking good. I swear, man, this paint, it's the most OEM looking rattle can <laughs> job you could do, I think. You kind of can't even tell the difference between the powder on this dust shield and that paint. So it's really close to the blackjack uh, from Prismatic, which is very cool. Here are the knuckles, the front knuckles. And so what I want to work on now is just reassembling these. I have the wheel bearings over here. I also would like to get the rear diff down here mounted up in the carrier and then mounted up in the car. So I have this bad boy with our bushings installed. I got all our hardware for everything right here. And before we do anything else, I also got bushings for the rear diff carrier like I had talked about. I was not able to find the Super Pro ones anywhere, uh, so this was the next be best option. They do seem like very high quality uh, polyurethane, nice and stiff. They got the little uh, metal sleeve insert so you can press them in much easier, hopefully by hand. So let's go ahead and try to press these in real quick and then we can work on getting the rear diff mounted up in that bad boy. One thing I did not notice about this little carrier before is that these are actually the sides that you press these into. Uh, they're actually asymmetrical. So as you can see, one set of bushings is taller than the other. That's something that I didn't really know about, so I just thought I would point that out. Because when I opened these, I actually thought that they sent me one that was like the wrong size. Oh my gosh, that just slides in so easily. I don't even know if we're gonna need the uh, little lube packets. Nope, definitely not. Wow, amazing. Hopefully, uh, these aren't too squishy because they do go in quite easily. It's pretty funny, man. I thought I was gonna have to use the vise for this thing, but uh, clearly not. Cool. There we go, that's better. All right, guys, so I was messing around with a little bracketry for this. This little piece right here, it's got these little like teeth that stick up and there's nowhere for them to really press in. So I thought that they would slide right into these little slits, but they actually don't. They sit like in between the slit and the center. So yeah, there's no way, there's like this huge gap, right? Which does not seem ideal. <laughs> so what I did, is I took one of them and just set it on the concrete and smacked them with a sledgehammer until they went flat so we can use this bracket. I think this will really help just keep everything solid. But because I did that, now I have like scratched it down to like the bare metal in spots. So I'm gonna scuff it up real quick and then I'm just gonna touch it up with that SEM paint. I just <clears throat> coated those in some paint. They are, those pieces are drying in the sun. Pieces up in here. So this is the right side. Like, like that. These All right guys, so I'm gonna reassemble these bad boys. So this piece should just slide right in. Oh yeah, real nice. Hardware through. Let me look up the torque spec for these. All right, 47.9 foot pounds. I'm just gonna do it in like a cross pattern.
very happy with that. All right, let's put the other one together and then uh, those pieces should be dry so we can mount up the rear diff. All right guys, so I've already mounted these brackets up in here. Um, they're not completely tight and I'm hoping that we can just slide the ends of the carrier up in there and then support it with like maybe a jack back here to push it up in and then uh, get our little like rear diff bracket pushed up in there and then throw the studs through. Usually I'm just sort of wrestling with this thing. So let's see if this goes any smoother. Hmm. Hmm. It's just kind of balancing on this jack state. Hmm. All right, let's see if we can't get this kind of situated on this holy stool on there. All right, so I guess no matter how you do this, you're gonna wrestle. <laughs> um, definitely switching over to this rolly stool was the way. It's supporting the diff really well, and it's up high enough for me to get these just at least resting on those brackets. Get our plate installed on the top, get the bolt through, and then uh, at least fasten them down a little. All right, so I got both bolts in those brackets. Um, I didn't fully tighten them down, but they're in there enough. I'm gonna throw this in here now, and we'll get this bolted. Oh no, it hits on the way in. Okay, well, I guess we can't do it that way then. Like this. Oh, yeah, for sure. That was the way. So I just did one side. got one of them to thread. All right. all right guys, so I got it all uh, tightened down. Nothing is actually fastened to uh, the OEM torque specs, but I will go back through and do all that later. I just don't have much more time for today, unfortunately, but I am stoked that, that we got the uh, rear def and that carrier mounted up. Our bushings are looking nice up in there. Everything fit up quite well. Pretty happy to have such a big bulky driveline component mounted back up underneath. I am unfortunately gonna have to wait to uh, mount these on. I need to pull the Fortunato coilovers out of the wagon and throw them on here before I start mounting these up. Uh, and then the rear knuckles I will do later as well. I am waiting to uh, receive my new wheel bearings for those with the seals. And so once those get here, I'll get these all powder coated up. I still need to sandblast the dust shields. So I'm gonna get those done as well. We'll get those also powder coated. Every week, just getting that much closer. This last week, unfortunately, I didn't have as much time to dedicate to this project. Uh, just had other like, just home maintenance stuff to do on the house. And it took up a lot of my like free time that I would have normally used on this. But that's okay, that's just how it goes, man. Sometimes you gotta prioritize and put the project car on the back burner. I don't really know exactly what I'm gonna be working on this next week. Um, I don't know if those wheel bearings will be here in time to really do anything with those uh, rear knuckles. Uh, I may investigate the gearbox and start pulling it apart to see if I can reinstall some new synchros in that thing. And yeah, but other than that, I mean, we have so much stuff to do that uh, I'm not worried about it. I'll find something to do on this thing. With that said, thank you guys for watching. Really appreciate your support. Please hit that like button if you haven't already and think about subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. I will catch you guys hopefully mid next week or by the weekend at least. And uh, yeah, I apologize for having another uh, uh, week long hiatus between videos, but uh, sometimes this stuff just kind of takes a little longer and I don't want to rush through it and just put out like a crappy video that doesn't really show anything interesting. It's kind of where I'm at sometimes. But uh, yeah, I think this next week I will be back on schedule again and we'll keep pushing forward. So once again, I appreciate all the support and I will catch you guys next time. Peace out, my friends.